soon coming up on 851. Man's ever-increasing demands for more land and more resources not only threaten the acreage we set aside for national parks, they threaten the wildlife that inhabit our parklands. The Latin name is Ursus Arctos Horribilis, in plain English, grizzly bear. A full-grown grizzly can weigh upwards of 1,000 pounds. In the past 15 years, they've killed and eaten 10 people. By anyone's definition, they are the most dangerous animal on the North American continent. They are also endangered. Some scientists think the grizzly bear will be extinct in the lower 48 states by the end of the century, maybe even sooner. If you fear the wild, perhaps that's good news. But today, you're going to meet the man who shot these films. He believes that bad news for the bears would also be bad news for mankind. Well, the grizzly represents what we evolved with, what we grew up with, our species. The human race and uh, the grizzly bear have been on Earth about the same amount of time. I think it's, it's very risky to go on without a little piece of that original habitat from which we sprang all our humanity, all our, all our intelligence, our imagination. The human mind itself sprang from such a community. And the bear represents that. And I think that's why we ought to keep a few of them around. According to Doug Peacock, we are the ones forcing the grizzlies toward extinction. There are too many people in our parks, too little wilderness, not enough mountains where the bears can hide. The grizzly has always been part myth, part reality in the American experience. And Peacock is part myth, part reality. He's not a scientist. He's an ex-Green Beret medic who, after returning from Vietnam, decided to make saving the bear his own little war. That's good stuff. I think it camouflages our scent. And even though I can't prove that, it makes me feel a lot more confident when I go out because a grizzly can really pick up on a human scent a long ways away. Those who oppose Peacock's views think he sometimes goes a little overboard, but they do respect his knowledge. Certainly his films, which are the result of eight years of exhaustive work, provide us with rare scenes of these very dangerous and very shy animals living freely in their natural habitat. It hasn't been easy work, Peacock claims he's been charged at by grizzlies many times. Most of the times, they have been uh, females with young that I've stumbled a little too closely on or wandered up on me before I saw them. And all you can do when that happens, you've got to stand your ground. Because if you run, you just trigger that predator instinct and, you know, you're meat. As unnerving as it was to think of oneself as meat for grizzly, we decided to join Peacock and a friend on a trek looking for bear in Glacier National Park near the Canadian border. There's a couple old bear tracks in here. They're not very good ones, I'm afraid. Our chances were very slim of actually encountering a grizzly. Tromping through the woods with a TV crew isn't the best way to sneak up on a bear. We sighted some glacier wildlife, but like many others who have tried, we found that meeting a bear can be all but impossible. That was not always the case. Fifteen years ago, this National Geographic documentary recorded what was a familiar sight to Yellowstone visitors. Bears in abundance, eating at cart garbage dumps and begging by the roadside. But the park, without extensive research on the possible effects, decided to cut the bears off from all human food. When the grizzly and black bears came to a dump, they were trapped and moved into the wild country. Those who kept coming back were shot and killed. Apparently, the plan worked. Tourists will see a lot of animals in Yellowstone, but they'll be lucky to see a bear. The bears are here, absolutely. But they're not, uh, they're not on the roadsides, and their uh, rear ends aren't sticking out of a garbage dump somewhere. They're in the wild where they should be. What's your guess? The number of grizzlies. I'd be real happy if somebody could count me 100, 150 grizzlies in Yellowstone ecosystem. Real happy. The truth is, nobody knows for sure how many grizzlies are left. Even the Park Service has been revising their guesses downward. On our trip, three days in Yellowstone and two in Glacier, we didn't see any bears. But maybe we weren't good hunters. Two weeks later, five hunters near Glacier saw grizzlies and killed them. But maybe they weren't such good hunters either. They said they thought they were black bears, a 200 pounds smaller, different color. With poaching, some continued Park Service kills and death by natural causes, everybody admits the grizzlies are threatened. And the rule of thumb that you use for every grizzly you know is that there's another one you don't know about that's poached or that dies of a natural death. So that means that you're losing up to 30, 40 animals a year. 
That means virtual extinction by the end of the decade, not even the century. That's really bleak odds. Can the bear and people exist in the same area? Well, they have to. They have to exist in the same area, especially here. But uh, that's part of our job is to, uh, to do everything that we can to minimize the, the conflict, uh, the interaction between uh, uh, human beings and, and bears. Peacock and other conservationists say that's not enough. The Park Service has to do more. They have to stop removing bears and start removing some of the people. It may mean that in Yellowstone Park, if you really want to have grizzlies, you can't have two million visitors a year. I think it's reasonable to have a certain amount of human use and human visitation, but what you can't have in Yellowstone is all that bloody development. We don't need that. If I were the grand lizard of all national parks, I'd tear up all that asphalt and get rid of all those places. I'd save only the Old Faithful Inn as a monument to our stupidity, but that probably won't happen for a while. <laughs>